Mr. Thanks for joining us. It's been a long time since we've had you. Uh, since the last time you've been in our show, the voters have sent you back for another four-year term in District C. You must be proud, very happy to represent your constituents. Very much so, Randy. The election season is always a difficult season. Uh, I had a very uh, good opponent this time around. Uh, but it is, it's, it's satisfying to see that the voters put you back in office, that they had the confidence and the trust, and that's what it's all about. It's serving the, the voters, the constituencies in District C, and something I look forward to for the next four years. Any county watchers could see that there certainly is no downtime through the month of December. You had probably two of the longest board meetings you, you and your colleagues had all year long, dealing with some very weighty issues, Commissioner. Um, the University Medical Center, of course, you and your colleagues eliminated the UMC advisory board, but you're also considering some other changes that you need some help with the legislature. Just talk a little yeah. bit about that. You know, UMC is our treasure. It truly is uh, not only for Clark County, uh, all the cities, but it's become you know, something that so many people take pride, especially those that have been in the community for years. And the, the best news about UMC is the fact that they have nationally recognized programs. Their trauma center, the burn center, uh, the Children's Hospital and the employees over there. A wonderful reputation and not just the doctors involved with the hospital but the nurses and right down through to the support staff. So we can't talk enough good about UMC as far as they, what they provide to this community. The challenges at UMC are fiscal. We have been subsidizing the hospital operations uh, for many years uh, upwards of the tune of 60, 70 million and what that means is other operational issues at the county suffer. That money has to come from somewhere, from the general fund, so we're taking away from other services. But it's a priority. The health care and the safety net is a priority. What we have done uh, for the past few years is look at ways to improve the efficiencies at UMC, from on, on the revenue side and certainly on the expense side. And we had the hospital advisory board, uh, a group of volunteers that spent the better half of two years coming up with some recommendations and some great proven results how they did help efficiencies and some revenue issues. It was time for them to move aside and the issue before us now is to go up to Carson City to allow a change in state statute that would allow us flexibility in the governance of UMC. And we're looking at that as far as creating an additional hospital board to serve as a buffer between the commission and the hospital, uh, looking at ways that we can uh, build more competitive uh, things into the way UMC operates. But the bottom line is we have to keep looking at ways to improve UMC from the operational side. If not, I think other places in Clark County, other services and programs suffer. And it's, it's difficult because it's a very emotional issue. In fact, most of the meetings we've had for the better part of two years have been well attended by employees. Uh, they're concerned. They, the uncertainty about their future is naturally going to be disconcerting to any employee. You know, do I have a job next week, next year, five years from now? <clears throat> so there's, the, again, that emotional side coming out. So the biggest thing going into the new year is that we communicate with the employees. Uh, no one, uh, and I can speak for the entire board, no one wants to do anything to harm UMC. Uh, the intent is to identify ways to strengthen it, to make it more sustainable, it, not just for next year's budget cycle or the next few years, but for the next generation of Las Vegas. So uh, an issue that's going to be with us for the better part of next year. But obviously some things, Commissioner, are not going to change. The, the, the mission of UMC, treating the indigent care, it, that will never change, as well as the quality of care that any patient that goes there will receive. No question. Uh, we're, we're strengthening the relationship with the Nevada School of Medicine. We're relooking all our contracts with doctors and vendors. Uh, the Commission is taking a, a macro look and trying to get the expertise in with this new advisory board or hospital board, and certainly Brian Benneman, the uh, CEO, just constant improvement. We're looking for ways to constantly improve. But you're right, uh, the, what UMC provides to this community, not only in indigent care, but in care overall, is just unparalleled. Another thing that the legislature is going to have to deal with after the, the Board of County Commissioners looked at now is uh, the Metropolitan Police Department. This is, goes back almost 10 years ago now where voters passed a half cent sales tax, quarter cent has been activated, and now there's another quarter cent sitting there which would help uh, Sheriff Gillespie, the men and women at Metro, and 
their personnel. Maybe just kind of flesh through that uh, discussion, if you will. Well, and it's important, be outside of UMC, I think Metro is the most important issue that we're facing as a county commission. And it, it boils down to this, 73% of Metro's annual budget comes from property tax, City of Las Vegas, and Clark County contributions. Those are the three big sources. Now, property tax has been decimated. Uh, I think the sheriff used the number down 61%. Uh, certainly, contributing to a 45 to 50 million dollar deficit going into next year's budget. And for the city and the county to try to make up that property tax shortfall is impossible because both of those agencies are facing the same fiscal challenges. So what do you do? If we do nothing, we're starting to see the signs of what will happen. The sheriff has eliminated the DARE program, uh, cut back on the gang saturation unit, postponed two police academies for new officers. His officer ratio, which is a national standard, about 2.32 officers per thousand, they had, Metro had gotten that up to about 2.08 officers at the peak in maybe 08, 09. And that ratio now has fallen down to 1.73, and it's moving downward because each year through attrition and retirements, we're losing officers and no new officers are coming on. The result has been, after a decline for almost six or seven years in the crime rate in Southern Nevada, this past year we've seen an increase of 11%. That's significant, and I think it's the first signal that we've reached that tipping point. We have to find a way to offset this deficit with, with Metro and not off the backs of the county and the city. Uh, this is the way to do it. When the voter initiative the uh, half cent sales tax passed and they went up and the, the sheriff at that time asked for only a quarter of the half cent. Uh, there was certainly the, the intent to come back for the second quarter and that's what we're essentially, he's going up to Carson City to A, ask for the second quarter cent of the voter approved initiative and also to ask for some flexibility in what they called the More Cops Initiative. That was the name of the initiative that passed with a specific purpose of putting police officers on the street. We need that, we need that money, and the debate certainly is, well, even though it was passed eight years ago, is it the same situation today? From an economic standpoint, it's probably more of a hardship, but from a need standpoint, never, at least in the last decade, has Metro needed more officers than they do today.